Well, welcome to this family service. And uh, hopefully through the technology, it's going to Facebook Live. So be careful what you say, because it'll be recorded. And then later on, we hopefully will get it on to YouTube. Um, do, do most people know about YouTube, hopefully. And uh, you can look it up there as well. Um, I'm Joe. Some of you will, will have seen my face, probably about this, this much of it, above the mask. Uh, on, um, we get a bit of a hum there. And I'm co-leading with Amy today, who's with us. And as it's a family service, it'll be good to get Amy to, to do some of her magic. And uh, you can see already there's some props and things. So hopefully that will be a bit of fun um, in our family service. Um, so we're kind of asking the question, aren't we? What is, what is it all about? And uh, Jesus, um, today, the, the vine, the branches... Um, really gives us some of his last words before he goes to his death. We're waiting for Pentecost, of course, but still we're going back into the upper room and, uh, and to Gethsemane and looking at that. I'm going to read out some bands of marriage, a little bit of leg legalities that we have to do, and then we'll, we'll have a period of stillness, and I'll pray, and then I'll hand over to the band. So here are the bands of marriage. So I published the bands of marriage between Luke John Turton and Jessica Ivy Worth, both of St. Mary's Callington. This is the first time of asking if any of you know any reason in law why these persons may not marry each other, you are to declare it now. Good. Hopefully that will continue. Well, let's pray, and we'll certainly pray for them as well and for their marriage. So let's just have a moment of silence. Heavenly Father, we pray for Luke and Jessica as they prepare for their big day. Above all, Lord, we pray peace upon them. We pray that at this time of um, uncertainty with COVID, that you would help all the things to come together, but above all, that they would discover more and more of your love in their lives and in their marriage together. So we pray blessing on them. And now we ask you, Lord, to draw close to us. We know we need to be connected to you if we're to grow and to be the people that you want us to be. Help us as we hear the worship, though we can't join in the singing, but that you would lift our hearts. And as we hear something of your word, and as we fellowship together, even though we're socially distanced, that, Lord, you would draw close to us and unite us in your love. In Jesus' name. Amen. And I'll hand over to the band. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Good morning, everyone. The Bible says the Lord inhabits the praises of his people, and if we praise him, he will be here. And that's amazing, isn't it? To think that the creator of the universe can be with us this morning in such a place as this, in such a time as this. So you can praise and you can worship with your hands. You can stand up. You can even dance around. Nobody's going to laugh at you. I don't think anyone anyway. So just be free to worship this morning. We welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise. Almighty God of love, we welcome you in this place. We welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise. Almighty God of love, be welcome in this place. here for you. We 
are here for you. Let your breath come from heaven. Fill our hearts with your life. We are here for you. We are here for you. To you our hearts are open.
phone's not. Oh, I am. I'm working. I'm working double time. I think we need Dave, and Amy's going to do reading, and I'm going to be. What am I going to be? Well, you're going to help us to kind of understand it a little bit. We're going to unpack it a bit. We're right. Going to kind of. So I'm going to read it, and then you're going to tell me what you think it's saying. Right. That's what we're going to do. We've never done this before, by the way. This is the first time. We kind of had this idea, but who knows? We'll just we'll just see what happens. We're going we're gonna to snip some stuff off. Right. So what have you got in your Dave's mind? looking very worried. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got some pens, that's good. That's a good pens. start. I hope they work. Technology. I mean, the, the band and the sound were brilliant the other day, and of course, oh, you know, we've always, we're always going to have technical issues, aren't oh, we? But, true. Yeah. Right, so... Do you need to read something? I do need to read something. You, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. I've got some of those. I, I brought those as well. Oh, are we matching? Yeah. Woo! And I brought some of yours. Oh, yours look fancier than mine. Mine are really old. Yeah. But they work. Yeah, they work. We, got, we got about three, four pairs, but we moved and I couldn't find a single pair, so I'd go and oh. buy another pair. Ah. So now we've got about seven pairs. Anybody <laughs> needs these? So, you mentioned earlier about a vine. So that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about that God is the vine. So... What on earth does that mean? So I'm the gonna vine. Read this. Yeah, so Shall I try and draw a vine? I'm a really brilliant drawer. Oh. My wife's doing art. She thinks I'm amazing. <laughs> I, I want to impress her. Ahead. I'm going to draw a vine. Right, so the vine and the branches. So this comes from John 15, and I'm going to read it from 1 to 8. Have you got that, Joe? 1 to 8. 1 to 8. John. 15. 1 to 8. 15. That's his one, two, eight. These are dangerous. Hope someone's eye out with these. So it says, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. Hang on a minute. There's your vine. Who's the vine? Uh, God is the vine. I am the vine. Who's speaking? Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Yeah. Jesus is yeah. God, of course. Jesus, so hang on. Yeah. Jesus is the vine. And the Father is the gardener. So Jesus, the Son, is the vine. And We're not supposed Father to draw God. God, are we? So, it's yeah. Big G or I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to draw. I'm gonna have to draw a stick man. Larry, he was the stick person, because I don't really want to draw God, because it's just a basic representation. Uh, God, and what does God have? I'm gonna give God a smiley face. Yeah, He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. So he has a pair of prunes like this kind of thing, like um, pruning shears. Yeah, pruning, like we've got. Yeah. So he's going to cut these branches off. So this is God. He's the gardener. Yeah. And the gardener. Jesus said he's the gardener, so I, I, I have to go along with that. Theologically, yeah. we have to work with that, don't we? Yeah. So yeah. Jesus is the vine. And right. And God the Father is the gardener. And he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. So he's cutting off bits of... <laughs> Jesus, really. So he's, I, I, the, the I couldn't, from the vine, which is yeah, because I'm such a good artist and I like to be a perfectionist. I didn't want to draw a branch, so I just thought I'd bring one. Oh, that's a good so idea. there you are. There you go. So he's cut that branch off. It's a bit, it's a bit naff. Yeah. So imagine pruning shears. Yeah. There we oh, go. Wasn't that? Wasn't that? Wasn't that art? Very nice, beautiful. I like that. Yeah. Very. <laughs> right. Very visual. Yeah. So, um, so that. <laughs> This is the important bit. This is the next bit. The next bit, so right. once he prunes them off, it says so that it will be even more fruitful. So, so hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Sense, though, does it? If you're going to chop things off, how does it then become more fruitful if you're chopping bits off? So hang on a minute. Let's, let's go back. This is, this is producing fruit. Yeah. These are grapes, by the way. Just representational. It's a bit abstract. <laughs> okay. And imagine there's the grapes. See the grapes? There's some grapes there. I've bought some yeah. grapes just for you guys. And the grapes are there on the branch. And it's produced the grapes. We've had lots of... I'm going to eat one of these grapes because I think... Mm -hmm. Nice. Oh, yeah? Grapes. They're good. They're good. And it's produced the grapes, so what? Lop it off. Why? Yeah, it produced grapes. Sense. That doesn't make sense. So it's going to lop sense. it off, say, lop it off there. That's gone. Yeah. And now what's going to happen? Well, it, it says it's going to be even more fruitful. More fruitful? Yes. So I'm going to get more grapes. Yes. Right. So, um, and then it talks about being clean and 
so this is going to grow again. And then I'm going to get even more grapes. Well, isn't it true that when you chop off a branch, kind of two more sprout off of it, like that? Yeah, like that. So we're going to get even more grapes. Yeah. So much As you can so see, that's Yeah, the gardener is completely overwhelmed by how many grapes we've got. Exactly. So that's what it's saying, is that once we get rid of one branch, then we become more fruitful because more branches grow right. in this place. So, and it says, you were already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. The word. The word. So the word is something. I'm going to put this in here because I think the word... Something inside, it changes us, doesn't it? it does it's very small, but he's written word. That says word. Word. Oh, he's writing it bigger now. <laughs> very good. Um, so, it says then, remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Right. I'm going to let you illustrate that later and explain that because okay. there's too, too much going on. Yeah, there's a lot. This is yeah. going to need another part, yes, isn't it? Yes, it is. We're going to need a part two. There's a, part a lot two. to unpack here. Um, yeah. So then um, it says, neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. So I will talk about that later. Don't worry about right. that. Bit. Right. Do you think this cutting bit's a bit painful, though? Yeah, it might be. Yeah, if I was a branch and I was... Yeah. I was yeah. fruitful and I was... There's, some, there's something not nice yeah, about it. Yeah, because these do look quite painful. They do. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so what, what do we do about that? I don't know. <laughs> That's something for you to think about, isn't it? Uh, God cutting back? Yeah. Maybe COVID, I don't know. COVID yes. is God cutting the church back. Say, do you know what? I want you guys to be more fruitful mm -hmm. like this. So you're not going to be doing what you normally do. It's going to cut back. Is that what he's saying? Yeah? yeah. You can shake your head and say, no, I have no, no problem with people disagreeing with me, by the way. My family do it all the while. <laughs> So um, it says, apart from me, you can do nothing. So if you remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown in the fire and burned. Oh my gosh, that's, that's extreme. I'll talk about that later. That's, Good, that's, I'll let you do that Yeah, one. no, that's, 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 that's too much information. Yeah. There. Um, so if you remain in me and my words remain in you, so there's the word again. The word, so word is in you yeah. and you're connected and the word remains in you. And this then, is a great bit. It says, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Right. So I'm assuming then we're talking about prayer. Right. Right. So something to do with prayer. Yeah. Whoa! I mean, this is this is it's a lot of information. This is a lifetime of understanding, isn't it? What on earth is this? Is the big picture? Yeah. Everything, everything, that God and Jesus represent mm -hmm. is in this picture. It's a picture of of it all. Yeah. And then this is the last line because there's a lot. There's a lot of information <sighs> here. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Wow. A lot. There's a lot wow. of information there. So we've got. So this is a picture of of us as following Jesus, following God, yeah. bearing fruit, and that shows. We'd, so if we've if we've not fruit cakes, but mm -hmm. we bear fruit, yes. <laughs> we're 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 followers of Jesus. Yes. What was the first bit you said on that verse? What was the first bit? Of um, it says, "This is to my Father's glory." Ah. <sighs> Whoa. Because yeah. if I was a gardener, right, and I, and I had this many grapes from one branch, and then, and I knew that by getting those pruning things out mm. and cutting, I was going to get two or three times that amount, whatever that represents, by the way, because that's for you to answer. Mm -hmm. And I got three times, I'd be going, wow. If I was the gardener, I'd be thinking, and people would be going, wow, you've got, you've got amazing grapes. You've got amazing wine. Wow. That's the kingdom, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Wow. So that is, that is, I can understand that, but I think, a little bit. Yes, yeah. Just a I glimpse. Could, now it's kind of visual, it makes a little bit more sense. So yeah. obviously, Jesus being the vine at the centre there, uh, with the word, being able to ask for what we need through prayer, God coming along, pruning things that aren't quite working, so that we then become more fruitful. That all makes more sense now.
And you guys have seen an artist at work as well. So it's beautiful. That's it's beautiful. even better, isn't it? I just want to turn it for the people over here because I don't oh, think yeah, you can see. Yeah. There you go. Look, look, look. So we might, we might auction it. it off afterwards. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Any bidders? Anyone want to buy Joe's beautiful, <laughs> beautiful drawing here? Well, I'm going to move my, sh my pruning shears because for elf and safety reasons. Elf and safety, But yeah. I'll leave the grapes. Um, and we are going to unpack that story yeah. even further in one moment but i think we'll get the band back to do a few more songs excellent thank you by the way
Well, I've been doing some gardening this week and I found this dead branch and it was really annoying because I wanted this branch to, to have some fruit on it. So I willed it and I said, bear fruit, for goodness sake, bear fruit. And it was really frustrating me because it just wasn't doing anything. So I thought, right, okay, okay, I'm a fairly fairly smart person. I mean, come on, I, 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 can, I can figure something out here. I can do something with this. So I thought, I'll get some fruit and I'll get some sticky tape and I will just stick it on to the branch. That's what I will do. I will just... Right, come on. We can do this. We're clever. We can do this. We can... I need some more tape, it's just, it's just, it's not working, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, we can do this, come on, we're, we're clever, we can, we can get this, I'll tell you what, it's the gloves, it's the gloves, it's the gloves, the gloves are just getting in my way, get, get rid of that, get rid of that, right, let's try this again, come on, right. There, done it, done it, there, there, it's, it's going to stick, it's going to stick. Stay right there. Um, you know what? I don't think this is going to work. Um, maybe, maybe this was just not meant to bear fruit. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, what does it take for a plant, a, a bush to bear fruit, a tree to bear fruit? What does it take? Anybody know? What does it need? Call out your answers. What does it need? What does a tree need to bear fruit? Water. Thank you, Ian. What else do they need? Sunlight. Lorraine and Lenny. Twins over there. Lovely. What else? What else does it need? Soil. Thank you, Gillian. Soil. So, we've got a problem here in the fact that this doesn't have any soil. It does have light, but it doesn't have any water. So it's not going to bear fruit, is it? And just adding some sticky tape and an apple isn't going to do it, is it? It's just no use. I think that needs to go into the compost, get rid of the plastic first. Get rid of the plastic and it needs oh, sticky tape everywhere. It needs to be composted. I, don't, I think this is a lost cause. I don't think I'm going to be able to put any fruit on that. No matter how much I ask it to bear fruit, it's not going to do it because it doesn't have those three things. 
So what does it take then for a Christian to be fruitful? What do we think about that? What does it take for us to bear fruit? Anybody know? Any answers? Oh, joy. That's beautiful. She said to trust and follow Jesus. I love it. That was a star. Perfect answer. That's exactly what I was looking for. So, this here, as you can see by the beautiful sticker, is a blueberry bush. This is a blueberry bush. And you'll notice that it's got a lot of flowers on it. And what happened was, is when it was the winter time and all of the, the branches and the, the flowers died off, I did, a bit of, um, I did a bit of that stuff, you know, this, this thing. Pruning. I did a bit of pruning. And I, I got rid of a few branches that, you know, weren't going to, they, they, were, they were dying, you know, so I got rid of it. And what happened was then all these flowers in the last couple of weeks have just sprung out because I chopped off some bits that weren't needed anymore. So now these beautiful flowers here are going to turn into blueberries, which are really yummy, by the way. I love blueberries. Very nice. So as me and Joe were kind of talking about earlier, what's going to happen is that this is going to become more fruitful because I've done a bit of pruning. I've gotten rid of things that weren't really needed. So that's that thing. So you notice here there's this kind of big brownie bit here. That is the vine. And that bit you don't want to mess with. But then these bits here, the green bits, those are the branches and those are the bits that you know, need a bit of care, a little bit of pruning, so then they then become really fruitful. But if I was to chop off one of these now with all of this beautiful flowers that's going to turn into fruit, if I was to chop it off now, what would happen to it? It would die. Well done, Joy. It would die. So, yeah, so if, I, if, it's, not connected to the, if it's not connected to the vine then it's not going to bear any fruit. And in the Bible, it was saying that Jesus is the vine. So if we're not connected to Jesus, then we're not going to bear fruit. So what can we do? What can we do to make sure that we stay connected to Jesus? Because as soon as we say, I'm going to live my life for Jesus. I'm going to be friends with Jesus. I'm going to live my life for God. I'm going to be friends with God forever now. As soon as we say that, then that means that we are then connected to Jesus. But how do we make sure that that connection is really, really strong and we don't fall away like this dead branch here? How can we do that? So, I need a volunteer. I need Steve. Because he's in my bubble, so we're allowed to be close together. We're allowed to do that. Okay, so, Steve, if you stand by the lectern, yeah, and I shall stand here. So, yes, perfect. So, Steve is like, I am one of the branches, okay? So, how can I make sure that the connection between the branch and the vine is super strong? So I've got some leaves here, okay? And these are the things that we need to do to make sure the connection between the vine and the branch is super strong. So the first thing we need to do is, where is it? There it is. What does that say? Bible, Bible. And that was what we were talking about, the word. This is the word. So the Bible is the word. So... We need to make sure in the Bible it tells us all about how to live as Jesus did. So the word Christian literally translates as Christ-like. So we need to behave like Jesus did. So loving each other and praying for each other and being close to God. That's what we need to do. So the only way we can do that is to find out what Jesus did while he was walking the earth. So we need to make sure that we are reading our Bible every day so that we can get to know who God is and what Jesus did when he was here so that we can be more Christ-like. So that's one thing. 
Okay, so now, there we go. So, the next thing we need to do is to talk to some really clever people. Okay, so, and the way we do that is this big fancy word here called fellowship. Can everyone say fellowship? Thank you, lovely. So, fellowship means to literally spend time with other Christians. And that's how we can learn more, is by spending time with people who can be our role models and can model Christ-like behavior. So then we can then also be more Christ-like by spending time with each other and building each other up, encouraging each other and teaching each other how to be more Christ-like. So there's that one. Lovely, right, I'm getting closer, see? Now the next thing we need to do also is by coming to church and learning as well more about God every single time we come here. And we learn from really lovely people at the front here, like Joe and Lenny and Bill, who come and talk to us all about uh, God and what it says in the Bible about Jesus. So then we can learn lots about Jesus. So there's that one as well. Oh, getting even closer. There we go. Now, the next thing it said in there was about talking to God through prayer, didn't it? It said that we needed to talk to the gardener. So the way that we do that is obviously through prayer. And the more we pray, the closer we get to God. And the more we talk to God, the more he talks back to us. And we can really learn all about God and how much he loves us and how much he wants to do for us in our lives. And the only way we can do that is by talking to him. And you don't need to come to church to do it. You can do it all day, every day. You can talk to him wherever you are and whatever you're doing. And you can ask him for what you need. So there's that one. And then, look at that. Then, we're nice and strong. There we go. We're nice and strong. And we are connected to the vine. So that is... that we're connected to the vine and that connection is super strong and we can stay close to God and he will stay close to us because he loves us so much. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Thank you. So when we do that, we then will become a fallen branch. We will become a strong, fruitful branch by being close to God. So um, now I'm going to pray and what I thought we'd do is because we're talking about fruit... I thought what we would do is pray the fruits of the Spirit, okay? So who can tell me what the fruits of the Spirit are? Ian, give me one. Yeah, oh, you can say all of them if you like. Oh, gold star. Everyone give Ian a round of applause. That was beautiful. So if you didn't hear that, it was love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Okay, so we're going to pray over those things so that we then have those fruits of the Spirit. Because I mean, when he's talking here, it's not just the fruits of the Spirit. There's lots of other things he's talking about. In fact, it doesn't really go into detail of what the fruits are. It's just that we're going to be fruitful in life, which could mean that we're just really joyous in life, or everything that we do is just super good. But we also have the fruits of the Spirit in the Bible, which is really good stuff too. So we need to remember those fruits and remember to, do, to practice those fruits every day. So that's what I'm going to pray over us now. And um, we're going to just have a time of just quiet and reflection. So let's pray. Love. Father, please grow in us a deep love for you, a selfless love for our family and for those we meet each day. Joy. Father, please grow in us a joyful spirit so that we can rejoice and give praise at all times. Peace. Father, please fill us with your perfect peace 
that surpasses all understanding and which guards our hearts and minds. Grow in us the ability to trust you rather than to worry and fret. Patience. Father, please grow in us the grace to be patient and to wait on you. Help us to endure hardships calmly and without complaining. Kindness. Father, please grow in us a generous and compassionate attitude that is always looking to help others. Goodness. Father, please grow in us integrity and uprightness that we might glorify you. Faithfulness. Father, please grow in us the grace to be faithful to you and to not doubt your love and turn away. Please also grow in us the grace to be faithful to all our other relationships. Gentleness. Father, please grow in us a gentle and gracious attitude towards others. Self-control. Father, please grow in us self-control and discipline. Help us not to be indulgent in any area of our lives. Amen. Tidy up my mess. I'd like to invite the band to come back and um, do the final two songs for us. Thank you. the ocean loving kindness as the flood when the prince of life a ransom shed for us his precious blood here is love vast as the ocean Loving kindness as the flood When the Prince of life our ransom Shed for us his precious blood Who his love will not remember Who he sees to sing his praise He can never be forgotten Throughout heaven's eternal day. On the mount of crucifixion, fountains all open deep and wide. 
through the flood gates of God's mercy flowed a vast and gracious tide grace and love like mighty rivers poured in and from above and heaven's peace and perfect justice is the guilty well in Accepting, love thee ever all my days. Let me seek thy kingdom only, and my life be to thy praise. Thou alone shall be my glory. Nothing in the world I see. Thou hast cleansed and sanctified me, Thou Thyself hast set me free. In Thy truth, Thou dost direct me by Thy Spirit through Thy Word and Thy grace my need is meeting as I trust in Thee my Lord Thy great love all is pouring Thy great love and power on me with our Maybe facing some battles this morning, this week, this year. We all are, we all do. We all go through battles, we have to fight for our survival sometimes, and we feel like it. We've got to remember as his people that the battle belongs to the Lord. 
you hearing me? The battle belongs to the Lord. You may be in the middle of that battle, but the battle belongs to God. And he's already won that battle. He won that battle 2,000 years ago on a hillside outside the city of Jerusalem. And as the blood ran down and drenched the ground, that was the price he paid to win the battle for us. So whatever the battle you're facing this morning, whether it's fear, whether it's sickness, whether it's a relationship problem, whether it's economic or, or financial, whatever the problem that you're facing this morning, remember, you may be surrounded. You may feel like you're surrounded. But God is surrounding you and he's surrounding your problem as well. We've got to reach out to him and we've got to believe that the battle belongs to the Lord. You may feel like you're surrounded, but he's surrounding you. You may feel like you're surrounded, but he's surrounding you. I may look like I'm surrounded, but you're surrounding me, oh Lord. I may look like I'm surrounded, but you're surrounding me. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. the truth fight my battles this is how I fight my battles this is how I fight my battles this is how this is how I fight my battles this is how I fight my battles this is how I fight my battles this is how playing this as we're playing this this morning think about the battle that you're in right now think about the feeling that you're being surrounded and that the enemy's coming in like a tide but he has already won the battle he's the winner and if you're on the side of the Lord it makes no difference what God what, what they throw at you because God is in control surrounded but I'm surrounded by you make it a prayer I may look like I'm surrounded but I'm surrounded by you I may look like I'm surrounded but I'm surrounded by you I may look like I'm surrounded but yeah I know the truth this is how I fight my battles this is how I fight my battles this is how I fight my battles this is how this is how I fight my battles this is how I fight my battles this is how I fight my battles this is how this is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. And the shade that's all around you, that's actually the shade of his wings. Don't mistake it. I'm 
surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. I may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Yes, Lord. Even in the midst of life, and its busyness and its upsets, its problems. In the garden, he is the good gardener. He is the faithful gardener. He is the caring gardener. And he looks after all of his trees and plants because he loves them and he cares for them and he wants them to be fruitful. So no matter what attacks that we have, he's right there. Pruning, watering. He's there taking care of us. So, Father, as we go out today, help us to remember that you are the good gardener. You are the loving gardener. You are the caring gardener. That you love us. And that no matter what we're going through, you just need to reach out to Jesus, hold on to that vine, keep a hold of it, so that we can live a joyous and fruitful life regardless of what's going on around us. Because we are surrounded by you, Father. In your precious name, amen. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining in the service. Thank you for um, being here today, and we hope you have a really blessed week. Go in peace, guys.